Zelensky of Ukraine travels to Poland as NATO allies increase their military aid. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine traveled to Poland on April 5 in the wake of the latest announcement of U.S. military aid, even as Russian troops continued their costly and drawn-out battle to seize the eastern city of Bakhmut. After Russia's invasion, Zelensky intended to visit Poland to express gratitude to the country for sheltering millions of Ukrainian refugees and supplying his government with crucial weapons. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron was in China after agreeing to try to engage Beijing with U.S. President Joe Biden to hasten the end of Russia's assault on Ukraine, which is now in its second year. Beijing has demanded an end to all hostilities and declared its neutrality in the conflict. U.S. military aid pledged to date exceeds $35 billion. On Tuesday, the United States pledged an additional $2.6 billion including funding for three air surveillance radars, anti-tank rockets, and fuel trucks, to Zelensky's government. Russian news agency TASS reported that Moscow's embassy in Washington had accused the United States of wanting to prolong the conflict for as long as possible. Ukrainian forces are gearing up for a counteroffensive in the east against Russian forces, and the West has stepped up support for them as they do so, though when exactly the offensive will begin is unclear. After an initial delay, Spain has confirmed that the six Leopard 2A4 tanks it has pledged to send to Ukraine will now depart in the second half of April. In addition, 40 tank crew members and 15 mechanics have been trained at a Spanish military base in Zaragoza, which is located in the country's northeast. Germany, Poland, and Portugal, all members of NATO, have pledged to send a combined total of 48 Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine. Bakhmut, a mining city and transportation hub on the outskirts of a region of Donetsk province largely under Russian control, remained the focal point of the battlefield. After months of street fighting and bombardments, the city is a ruin and both sides have suffered heavy casualties. Ukrainian soldiers in muddy dugouts near the town of New York, about 50 kilometers, 30 miles, south of Bakhmut, described daily repelling of Russian attacks. They sneak up on us, open fire, and attempt to wear us down. The commander of the infantry unit, who only identified himself as Bodia to Reuters, said that once they assess the situation, they can move forward for a little more. Meanwhile, we do our best to draw them in close so that we can deal more damage. Military leaders in Ukraine have emphasized the need to hold Bakhmut and other towns while inflicting losses ahead of an expected counteroffensive. There was no let-up in enemy actions aimed at storming the city of Bakhmut, the Ukrainian general staff reported. Over the past 24 hours, this location alone has repelled at least 20 enemy attacks. Wagner Group mercenaries, who have been leading the assault on Bakhmut, claimed over the weekend that they had taken the city center. Kyiv, however, did not believe the claim. The Wagner forces have made gains in Bakhmut, according to the U.S.-based Institute for the Study of War, and they are expected to keep trying to consolidate control of the city center and push westward through dense urban areas. Reports from the battlefield were unverified by Reuters. It was planned that while in Warsaw, Zelensky would speak with Ukrainian refugees and meet with President Andrei Duda and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. The Ukrainian leader entered Poland on Wednesday morning. Poland has been instrumental in convincing other Western powers to provide battle tanks and other weaponry to Ukraine. As Polish presidential aide Marcin Pyszczodatz put it, it will be no surprise to anyone that the Ukrainian side will ask Poland and other foreign partners for more support, though Poland and its allies must be aware that we as Poland have already really done a lot. Earlier, Pyszczodatz mentioned that Ukraine had received the first shipment of MiG fighter jets. Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov wrote on Telegram that purchasing Polish MiGs will significantly strengthen our defense, allow us to make our skies safer, save the lives of our citizens, and also reduce the destruction caused by Russian attacks. Polish farmer anger over the downward pressure on domestic grain prices caused by imports from Ukraine led to the resignation of the country's agriculture minister, Henryk Kowalczyk, on Wednesday.
After the European Commission decided to allow Ukraine's grain to continue to be imported duty-free until June 2024, Kovalchik announced his resignation. According to the Kremlin, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko will meet with Putin for two days beginning on Wednesday. It was from Belarus that Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine in February of last year, making it one of Putin's most reliable allies. Putin announced last month that Russia will deploy nuclear weapons to Belarus for tactical purposes. Upon his arrival in Beijing, French President Emmanuel Macron suggested China play a role in ending the conflict in Ukraine due to its close ties to Russia. Together with European Union executive head Ursula von der Leyen, he is trying to reset relations with a crucial economic partner by bringing up contentious issues like Ukraine and trade risks.